What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to explain every armor titan in the history of Attack on Titan. In my opinion, this shifter is severely underrated because not only does it have thick armor covering its body, but it also grants the user a substantial amount of plot armor as well. This special plot armor has allowed Reiner to survive for nearly 4 whole seasons as of making this video. I mean, even when he genuinely wants to die, the plot still finds a way to keep him alive. Before we begin, I should mention that although Reiner has had his armor broken many times over the years, this is still one of the most durable titans out there. The armor enabled him to save Zeke's life during the battle at Fort Slava, as well as easily obliterating the gate in Walmaria and defending against the blades of the Survey Corps. When we contrast this with other titan shifters, the Warhammer is the only one that's really comparable as it has a thin white shell protecting its body. It's hard for me to factually say which of these has better protection, cause we just haven't seen the Warhammer tested enough. For example, we haven't seen how the Warhammer fares against cannon fire or swords, whereas with the Armor Titan we have kind of seen a lot of different case studies. I would say though that both of their armors were broken by Thunder Spears, so I mean I guess it is true that humanity is surpassing the power of the Titans. Anyway, as usual for this type of video, I'll be explaining the backstory of the Armor Titan that we properly know, and then commenting on the unique designs of the ancient Armor Titans. This is the fourth video I've done in this series after previously doing every Beast Titan, Warhammer Titan, and Jaw Titan, so be sure to hit the sub button if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments which one you think I should do next. Okay, so the first Armor Titan we're going to talk about is Reiner Braun, who is a guy that was never meant to get this Titan in the first place. Starting at the beginning, he is the illegitimate son of Karina Braun and a random Malian man who wanted nothing to do with them. As Reiner grew up in the internment zone of Liberio, he spent most of his childhood desperately trying to become a warrior, because warriors are granted the title of honorary Malian citizens. He believed that his mother and father would be able to live together once he acquired that title, because as a young child, Karina implied that the only thing stopping them from being a family was the fact they weren't Malians. Reiner persevered in his attempt to become a warrior candidate, but could only watch on as Marcel, Bertolt, Annie and the rest of them were all chosen ahead of him. The problem for Reiner was that he had no practical skills that put him above any of those kids, but he was eventually chosen as the final warrior candidate after displaying a frightening loyalty to Marley in the written tests. This over the top loyalty is something that was definitely inherited from his mother, and as we saw in the anime, Porco absolutely roasted him for it. Of the 7 warrior candidates at the time, one of these two was meant to inherit the armor titan, and based on merit it would have been Galliard, but as we know, Porco was sabotaged by his brother. Marcel's interference is the only reason why Reiner became the Armored Titan, and who knows, I mean history would have changed completely because maybe the mission on Paradise would have been successful, like we don't actually know. Anyway, as I was alluding to, Reiner was one of the four warriors selected to infiltrate Paradise Island, with Zeke and Peek staying behind in Mali. This was meant to be a happy moment for Reiner, as one of his other goals for becoming a warrior was that he wanted to be a hero that could save the world. This mission to Paradise provided him with exactly that opportunity, but there were a few things that kind of soured the mood. Reason number one was that he had an encounter with his father before he went to the island, where his dad made it clear that Reiner's existence was pretty much the biggest mistake of his life. I imagine it wasn't the pep talk that Reiner was expecting to receive, but things managed to get even worse once he arrived on the island. As the warriors gathered around the campfire, Marcel revealed the truth that Reiner was never meant to be chosen as a warrior, and it was only because of his actions that it happened. Before anyone could even really process that information, Ymir's pure titan appeared out of nowhere as the sun began to rise, and if it wasn't for the plot armor titan, then he definitely would have died in this moment. In all seriousness though, clearly Marcel already felt some guilt about you know, making Reiner become a warrior instead of his brother, which is no doubt why he was so quick to save him from being eaten. With this one event, the warriors had lost one of Mali's seven titans on the very first day of their mission, and Annie argued that they should count their losses and return home. Reiner was majorly opposed to that idea, partly because he knew he'd be eaten straight away if they returned to Mali. Because Marcel died to save his life, it's not far fetched to assume that the military would hold Reiner responsible, and therefore, if that was the case, Porco would be ready and available to eat the armored titan. On top of that, Reiner still had his own ambition to be a hero that people could respect, and that was only possible if they continued with the mission. Through his desperation, he was able to convince Annie and Bertolt to persevere with the plan, and later that same day they arrived at Walmaria, with Reiner personally smashing the inner gate. It was really cool to witness the scene again in Season 4, because that time around we were able to hear his inner thoughts, and see that underneath this terrifying titan was actually just a confused child who was at the beginning of his journey. 
Now, in terms of the design, his armor titan stands at around 50 meters tall, and with the exception of some minor areas, his entire body is covered in armored plates. The front of his neck is one of those exposed areas, but luckily his nape has two protruding bits of hardening that protect his human body. Well, most of the time. It has an armored mouth guard that opens in an almost mechanical way, and as is often the case with some titans, its short blonde hair was identical to its user. Being a trained warrior candidate, Rhino was able to use this titan in very interesting ways, such as selectively destroying parts of his armor to increase his speed, or hardening his fingers so that he was able to scale the walls of Paradise. Despite that, I'd say advances in technology have affected this titan more than any other, as the armor is its main selling point obviously, but it can't withstand anti-titan artillery or thunder spears. When you consider that titans have been around for 2000 years, Rhino almost certainly had it the worst out of any armored titan because the tech in this era is really making him obsolete. One last thing to say about Rhino specifically is that according to Bertolt, neither of them could remember the memories of their predecessors, so as of making this video we don't know exactly who had this titan before Rhino. Next up, we're now going to be looking at all of the ancient armor titans that existed throughout history, but bear in mind that some of these images are from the final arc of Attack on Titan, so if you don't want to know spoilers then pause the video now. The first ancient titan we should talk about is this guy, who is covered from head to toe in relatively small plates of hardening. To me this design must have been inspired by the Thing from the Fantastic Four, as Isayama has never been afraid to take inspiration from western media. For example, Reiner's armor titan was modeled after Brock Lesnar, and in the manga there was a pure titan designed after Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. With the exception of its neck area, the Thing has no areas where it's not covered by armor, so who knows, this may just be the most armored armor titan in history. Moving on, chapter 137 was the debut of this ancient armor titan who we saw rugby tackling another titan shifter. It has curved armor on its face which looks pretty awesome alongside its hair, and unlike Reiner it has no mouth guards so its teeth are completely exposed. The helmeted armored titan is next, and as the name I gave it suggests, its defining feature is the medieval style helmet on its head. Because the back of the helmet is shaped like this, it means the nape area is protected by both the regular armor on the back and the helmet as well so I imagine that trying to kill this guy would have been incredibly hard. The one downside of this whole design though is that there's a lot of bare flesh exposed on its face, but beyond that it looks pretty good. Another ancient shifter was this freak of nature over here, which is a strong contender for the grossest looking armored titan. It has a bunch of clumpy hardening around the side of its head, and the hardening around its eyebrows and forehead was also quite bizarre. In the manga we saw it engage in combat with both humans and other titans, but ultimately it was decapitated with a swift kick. Going back to the very first armor titan to ever exist, we got this guy here whose design is remarkably similar to Reiner's. In all honesty, the only noticeable difference between him and Reiner is this gap in between his chest plates, but beyond that they are basically the same. In this panel on the left it kind of looks like it has a mouth guard as well which, you know, only furthers the comparisons. The remaining armor titans in this video only had fleeting appearances, such as this guy who had armor around his torso and head but no protection on his arms, and this one here with the strange pattern on his forehead, not to mention this one here that I think might be an armor titan, though I'm not 100% sure because the coloring makes it look pink but I think it still might be an armored potentially. There was also this one here in the background that didn't really have any outstanding features that caught my attention, but uh, I thought I'd put it in here just so you can see. As of making this video, the Attack on Titan manga still has two more chapters to go, so in theory there could still be another armor titan, if not many more to come. Um, but right now I'm also kind of entertaining the idea that maybe after the series is done there will be no more titans. I think that's a possibility as well given what the founder can do, um, so we'll just have to see. Thanks for watching as always and be sure to let me know down below which titan you think I should do next. A lot of people in my last video were asking me to do the armor titan, so now that I've done it I am kind of interested to see what's going to be the next most popular. Until the next one, peace out.